What is anthropogenic space weather? We shall see. These are environmental pollutants from human activity. Space weather refers to Earth surrounding near space. Humans have studied plasma in this place. These plasma blasts can affect satellites in space and power grids on Earth, disturbing the human race. But when high altitude nuclear tests were conducted during the Cold War by the US and Soviet Union in 58 to 62 for sure, these nuclear tests detonated explosives at heights of 16 to 250 miles above the Earth's surface so bright. The first blast wave expelled an expanding fireball of plasma, a hot gas of electrically charged large particles that humans saw creating geomagnetic disturbances distorting Earth's magnetic field lines many satellites near this explosions failed at that time these tests even created artificial radiation belts so unique these artificially trapped charged particles remain for weeks when these high altitude nuclear explosions did ignite aurora could be seen at the equator and not at the poles what a sight utility grids in Hawaii were strained when these tests did ignite and in space above the explosion affected some satellites these high altitude explosions are like having millions of lightning strikes hit the US in less than one second man what a fright this would cause havoc in every aspect of civilized life and its effect would mimic the largest solar storms with strike what is anthropogenic space weather we shall see these are environmental pollutants from human activity shop our new store merch and get custom birthday videos with your favorite characters I am the sun, the center of your solar system. I do erupt intense high energy radiation. This radiation I expel is called the solar flare. You learn about them in this song and why you should care. The sun is a ball of plasma like an extremely hot ocean shaped like a wheel. This plasma is pushed around and shaped by the sun's magnetic field. When the sun's plasma swirls around by its magnetic field, it gets Gets twisted and releases energy around sunspots, they are real. This energy released is caused by magnetic knots. When one of these knots breaks, it releases solar flares, so you are taught. Solar flares are waves of high energy radiation shot through the solar system in which we are all one. These solar flares race through space at the speed of light, creating a solar proton storm. These storms are no delight. When millions of tons of plasma are thrown from the sun's atmosphere. These storms are called coronal mass ejections as you see right here. These CMEs reach speeds of 5.6 million miles per hour. When they hit Earth, it doesn't hurt living beings even with such power. The Earth's atmosphere protects life from the biggest solar storms by absorbing the impact so beings on the surface are safe from harm. When a CME is too big, it creates a solar superstorm that occur once or twice a century so you've been warned if a solar superstorm did happen in this day and age it would shoot billions of tons of plasma from the sun i do say if this type of cme traveled across space towards the earth it would reach you in one day yeah that's fast for what that is worth its shock wave would compress earth's magnetic field making it frail the two magnetic fields would merge stretching earth's field into a thin tail this stretch tail can't contain this energy anymore when it snaps it releases explosive energy towards the earth that it stored this creates something very rare called the geomagnetic storm normally no living thing on earth would even know it had formed the only thing it would affect is your electricity because you rely on this so much it would disrupt human life you see because earth is covered in millions of electric wires and transformers this geomagnetic storm would shut down the power humans would be overturned if one of these storms hit the earth electricity and internet would not work all things powered by electricity would turn off along with all networks computers wouldn't work along with phones and electronic devices no refrigerators or any other 
our household appliances Even though we can't stop these terrible solar storms Their nasty side effects can be prevented by how we are warned Engineers would have a day or two to unplug major power grids Until the solar storm passes Earth Preventing blackouts we forbid Humans need to prepare for these types of storms To prevent being thrown back to the Stone Age before they form A cool event humans experience from any solar storm Is the Aurora Borealis at the two poles is where they perform I'm the life-giving sun, you all need me to live But I am unpredictable, so solar storms I give I am the sun, the center of your solar system I do erupt intense high energy radiation This radiation I expel is called the solar flare You learn about them in this song and why you should care Our new store merch and get custom birthday videos with your favorite characters. Trapping heat within its surface on this very hot sphere. This greenhouse effect makes us the hottest planet you will see in the solar system, even hotter than Mercury. Its atmosphere is so thick it creates a surface pressure similar to half a mile deep in Earth's ocean, I'm sure. Venus has a surface temperature of 900 degrees, which is hot enough to melt the metal lead with ease. If a human were to stand on the surface of Venus, this pressure would be so great that human would be crushed due to the high surface pressure and sulfuric acid clouds and heat from the thick atmosphere. Life can't exist here now. Recently, scientists think they found a Goldilocks zone in the atmosphere, which would be perfect to support. 
for life, let's see what they shared. They had found traces of a molecule called phosphine. Some organisms do produce this, let's see what that means. Phosphine's associated with microbial life, so science says it's found in oxygen-free environments like swamps and sludges. Phosphine's also associated with feces from animals on Earth. If it exists on Earth's environment, Venus might have life, of course. Using the James Clerk Maxwell telescope in Hawaii is how Jane Greaves detected a hint of the molecule phosphine. This means that life could exist in Venus's atmosphere with non-oxygen using microbes producing it in which I share. After lots of testing and trying to create phosphine without life using Venus's atmosphere and geology scientists failed with strife. So far the only explanation that has come from scientists is that you can't produce phosphine without life so it must exist. And if life does exist in the atmosphere of hot Venus then what other life could exist on other planets? Venus is the second planet from the sun. So why is it the hottest planet in the solar system? In Saturn's North Pole, there's something strange going on. There's a six-sided jet stream shaped like a hexagon. The six-sided hexagon storm is in my North Pole. It has a hurricane eye that is the center, which looks like a hole. The eye of this hurricane is 50 times larger with force than an average hurricane eye that exists on Earth. The storm's about 20,000 miles in diameter, which is twice the size of the great red spot on Jupiter. Atmospheric flows deep within Saturn create large and small cyclones. The smaller storms interact with the larger systems you should know. And as a result, they effectively pitch the eastern jet and confine it to the top of Saturn, the planet. The pinching process warps the stream into a hexagonal shape that will keep spinning on until an unknown date. When the speeds of the inner ring are moving ultra fast, it speeds about 340 miles per hour as they pass. The clouds at the very center of my pole are spinning rapidly, almost twice as fast as its planet Saturn, that's me. The direction of its storm's rotation is counterclockwise. The storm is locked in place in my North Pole. It resides. A hurricane on Earth typically lasts a week, you see. But this hexagon storm has been here for decades and possibly centuries. A Cassini mission explored Saturn for 13 years on September 2017, it plunged into Saturn's atmosphere. Cassini spacecraft took pictures of the hexagon storm with power. A movie was created from seven images taken over five hours. In Saturn's North Pole, there's something strange going on. There's a six-sided jet stream shaped like a hexagon. Shop our new store merch and get custom birthday videos with your favorite characters. This is the Aurora Borealis or the Northern Lights. In the night sky, you can see the waves of dancing light. Where are the Northern Lights? Where can they be seen? In the North or South Magnetic Poles is where you'll see their sheen. The Aurora Borealis is caused by electrically charged particles colliding into Earth's atmosphere from the sun with some pole. What causes these colors? You can see in the sky. And where are these particles? When a solar wind is shot from the hot burning sun Out into space in all directions This solar wind is full of electrons and proton gas, you know But it's mostly made of electrons shot from the sun that glows When solar winds shot towards the earth These particles travel at speeds over a million miles per hour Towards Earth's atmosphere, you see They can take two to four days for these particles to reach Earth, they're pushed to Earth's magnetic fields To the north and south poles Protecting you like a shield 
I'm an electron and I'm about to reach the Earth's North Pole Falling from high energy to normal energy I'll show When I reach this normal energy I produce a photon This is where things get interesting You'll learn in this song When a photon hits Earth's atmosphere Which is made up of air Which includes oxygen and nitrogen The gases that will flare I am oxygen when a photon collides with me I spark the color in the aurora that is seen as green My name is nitrogen And when a photon does hit me In the Earth's atmosphere my color is blue It's what you'll see These greens and blues come in different shades you see Called the aurora borealis Nature's light show we be These reactions do take place 60 to 300 miles in the atmosphere A safe distance you can observe this color show very clear What all Shows. What places in the north can you see the aurora geographically? Alaska, Canada, and Scandinavia are just three. See the aurora borealis is cousin in Antarctica glow, but it goes by the name of aurora australis as shown. Galileo did coin the term aurora borealis first. He coined this term in 1619 because of the color burst. Next time you see the aurora borealis, now you will know just how this this is the aurora borealis or the northern lights in the night sky you can see the waves of dancing light where are the northern lights where can they be seen in the north or south magnetic poles is where you'll see their sheen habitable place in space called the Goldilocks Zone. It's a place in space, a certain distance from our star, where liquid water could be found. Guess what? It's where you are. Goldilocks Zone is a habitable zone in an area around a star you know. The zone is not too hot and it's not too cold for liquid water to exist so life can grow. There is only one planet we know so far that is teeming with life, of course. That planet that we're sure can sustain real life has a well-known name. It is the Earth. If the Earth were to move as far as Pluto, the sun would be the size of a pea. The oceans and atmosphere on Earth would immediately freeze. But if Earth moved to the position of planet Mercury, the Earth's water would quickly boil away. There would be no more life you see. The Goldilocks Zone is a habitable place where Earth sits from the sun. Allowing water to stay liquid, liquid water is the source of life. That's how life on Earth begun. Stars come in different sizes, masses, and temperatures throughout space. Size and temperature of a star determines the Goldilocks Zone's place. Stars that are smaller and much cooler than the sun have a habitable zone much closer to their star on its run. Stars that are hotter, much larger, and more massive than the sun have their habitable zone much farther. This concludes our fun. Did you know? The place you call home is a habitable place in space called the Goldilocks Zone. It's a place in space, a certain distance from our star, where liquid water could be found. Guess what? It's where you are. 
this earth habitable? Why can life thrive on it? While the sun's plasma blasts towards us, what's protecting it? We're protected by Earth's magnetosphere, also called Earth's magnetic field. Let's learn more right here. There's a region around the planet beyond the atmosphere, created by Earth's internal magnetism called the magnetosphere. The reason life developed and continues to keep us alive is because of this magnetic environment it's why we thrive what's this magnetosphere and what does it protect us from let's take a closer look as we move towards the sun when the sun blasts plasma from the solar storm it emits huge bursts of energy and solar flares form solar flares are burst from the sun during an eruption pushed into space the solar and cosmic particle radiation this electromagnetic radiation from the sun does reach the earth and could destroy the atmosphere while on its run but the atmosphere is protected when these particles reach it by the magnetosphere deflecting when these particles do hit the magnetosphere changes shape when blasted with these particles directing them away from the atmosphere so they aren't harmful if our atmosphere were to deteriorate over time life on earth would perish you've learned this in this rhyme some of the particles aren't deflected away but have no fear when they get trapped in earth's magnetosphere the trapped particles get shot towards earth's two poles in the field lines also called the dipole which means two poles when these particles reach the atmosphere they react with oxygen and nitrogen causing the auroras that appear let's take a closer look at where this magnetosphere is formed we'll slice the earth in half so you're visually informed the electrically charged molten iron churns for sure below the earth's surface with Within the planet's outer core this generates a magnetic field large enough to race far past our earth's atmosphere out into space I am the sun, the center of your solar system. I do erupt intense high energy radiation. This radiation I expel is called the solar flare. You'll learn about them in the song and why you should care. The sun is a ball of plasma like an extremely hot ocean shaped like a wheel. This plasma is pushed around and shaped by the sun's magnetic field. When the sun's plasma swirls around by its magnetic field, it gets twisted and releases energy around sunspots they are real this energy released is caused by magnetic knots when one of these knots breaks it releases solar flares so you are taught solar flares are waves of high energy radiation shot through the solar system in which we are all one these solar flares race through space at the speed of light creating a solar proton storm these storms are no delight when millions of tons of plasma are thrown from the sun's atmosphere these storms are called coronal mass ejections as you see right here these cmes reach speeds of 5.6 million miles per hour when they hit earth it doesn't hurt living beings even with such power the earth's atmosphere protects life from the biggest solar storms by absorbing the impact so beings on the surface are safe from harm when a cme is too big it creates a solar super storm that occur once or twice a century so you've been warned if a solar superstorm did happen in this day and age it would shoot billions of tons of plasma from the sun i do say if this type of cme traveled across space towards the earth it would reach you in one day yeah that's fast for what that is worth its shock wave would compress earth's magnetic field making it frail the two magnetic fields would merge stretching earth's field into a thin tail this stretch tail can't contain this energy anymore when it snaps it releases explosive energy towards the earth that it stored this creates something very rare called the geomagnetic storm normally no living thing on earth would even know it had formed the only thing it would affect 
fact is your electricity Because you rely on this so much it would disrupt human life you see Because Earth is covered in millions of electric wires and transformers This geomagnetic storm would shut down the power, humans would be overturned If one of these storms hit the Earth, electricity and internet would not work All things powered by electricity would turn off along with all networks Computers wouldn't work along with phones and electronic devices No refrigerators or or any other household appliances even though we can't stop these terrible solar storms their nasty side effects can be prevented by how we are warned engineers would have a day or two to unplug major power grids until the solar storm passes earth preventing blackouts we forbid humans need to prepare for these types of storms to prevent being thrown back to the stone age before they form a cool event humans experience from any solar Solar storm is the aurora borealis at the two poles is where they perform. I'm the life-giving sun, you all need me to live, but I am unpredictable, so solar storms I give. I am the sun, the center of your solar system. I do erupt intense high energy radiation. This radiation I expel is called the solar flare. You learn about them in the song and why you should care. I am the Earth, the only planet with organic life. With 8.7 million species, we all fight to survive. You all live on me, so work like bees in a hive and keep this planet. Healthy so that we can all thrive. My atmosphere is 78% nitrogen, another 21% of it is oxygen, another small percentage is of other elements. Without my atmosphere around you would be frozen. I take 365 Earth days to orbit the sun. 24 hours makes one day, that's just one time. You won't fly off into space, gravity's pulling you down As fast as 9.8 meters a second towards the ground I am the Earth, the only planet with organic life With 8.7 million species, we all fight to survive You all live on me, so work like bees in a hive And keep this planet really healthy so that we can all thrive There are that exist on me moderate polar dry and tropical are four groups you see then there is continental it is the fifth category one climate in no group is highland way above the sea i'm the third planet from the sun no one is denser than me my axis tilted 23.5 yeah that's my degree 4.5 billion years ago is when i was born you see my Seven million species, we all fight to survive. You all live on me, so work like bees in a hive. And keep this planet really healthy so that we can all thrive. This is a total solar eclipse come see my narrow path in which i travel on the earth's surface this is a total solar eclipse my totality is on inspiring so don't miss this this celestial event is called a solar eclipse let me tell you about it so you can understand all this a solar eclipse is caused by the moon that is me i'm passing between the sun and the so black is what you see Here are several stages And some visual tips That you can use to recognize A total solar eclipse Stage 1 is called 
A partial eclipse is when the sun's disk is partially blocked by the moon like this. And stage two is called Bailey's Beats, which are bright spots of light. It's when low-lying valleys on the moon's edge allow sunlight through, that's right. Stage three is sometimes called the diamond ring. This stage is key, in which marks the last few seconds before totality. The last bit of sunlight that is able to shine through the low-lying valleys creates a single flash of light on the side of the moon. The fourth and most important stage is called totality. When the moon completely covers the disk of the sun, this is what you see. Then comes the final stages in which the sun will grow a crescent on the opposite side of the Bailey's beads, which once had shown. But before you see this celestial event, there's a few safety precautions for eye injuries to prevent. This is a total solar eclipse. Come see my narrow path in which I travel on the Earth's surface. This is a total solar eclipse. My totality is awe inspiring, so don't miss this. On Monday, August 21st, 2017, there's a total solar eclipse North America will see. But the totality you want to see can only be observed from Lincoln Beach, Oregon to Charleston, South Carolina, so I've heard. The path of totality is 70 miles wide, they say, seen in 14 states in the continental U.S. of A. Totality lasts a few minutes, so be sure to be there, and please use special safety glasses so your vision isn't impaired. You can buy these special solar eclipse glasses online, so protect your eyes from the sun while having a great time. This is a total solar eclipse. Come see my narrow path in which I travel on the Earth's surface. This is a total solar eclipse. My totality is awe-inspiring, so don't miss this. A solar eclipse has several areas we need to discuss. Take a look at this picture to learn each part is a must. Here's a penumbra, a partially shaded outer region. Surrounding the umbra, a fully shaded inner part that's darkened. A partial is on inspiring so don't miss this i am the north pole and i'm the south pole we're at opposite ends of the earth's axis to teach you is our goal i am the north pole and i'm the south pole neither of us get direct sunlight so we both remain cold I am the North Pole, I'm in the Northern Hemisphere, where the Earth's axis of rotation is shown right here. This is considered the Arctic, it's a polar region, consisting of the Arctic Ocean, which does stay cold in any season. The Arctic is ocean surrounded by land, touching parts of the following countries, sing so you understand. I touch parts of Alaska, Canada, Finland, and Greenland, Russia, Norway, Sweden, and also Iceland. My temperature varies, as you will see. These temps are in Fahrenheit, now pay attention if you please. My average temperature in summer is 32 degrees. And in the winter, I do drop to an average negative 40 degrees, you see. I'm home to the polar bear, the walrus, arctic fox, caribou, the norwal, beluga whale, and the muskox too. The North Pole is at 90 degrees north latitude. You can't get further north than me. This is so true. I'm the South Pole. I'm in the Southern Hemisphere, where the Earth's axis of rotation is shown right here. This place I'm located in is called Antarctica. It is real cold, even though it's extremely cold year-round. It barely rains or snows. Though I'm made up of lots of ice called glaciers, I'm considered a desert of this, I am very sure. The Arctic is land surrounded by the ocean. It's also the southernmost continent. I tell you this with devotion. I only have two seasons. They are summer and winter. I will tell you how I fluctuate in temperature. In 
the summer my average temperature is negative 18 degrees in the winter that temperature drops to negative 76 you'd freeze i'm home to many animals no matter how cold i get they live on the land and sea and survive even when they're wet there's many kinds of penguins seals and whales albatross antarctic krill and invertebrates i do hail the earth rotates on its own axis once in 24 hours each axis is in the north and south poles that's pole power i am the north pole and i'm the south pole we're at opposite ends of the earth's axis to teach you is our goal i am the north pole and i'm the south pole neither of us get direct sunlight so we both remain cold Alaska's boroughs and census areas A northwestern state in the U.S. Come sing along with us We're Alaska's boroughs and census areas Our state capital is named Juno. We have lots to discuss Aleutians East Borough splits the Bering Sea and Pacific Ocean This is where Anchorage Borough, Alaska's largest city's been Bristol Bay Borough touches the Bristol Bay Denali is a landlocked borough this is where it stays. Here in Fairbanks, North Starboro, we never rest. Haynesboro has Tonga's National Forest. Juno City's Alaska's remote capital. This is the Kenai Peninsula, also a borough. Ketchikan Gateway is a borough in the southeast. Kodiak Island Borough touches the Gulf of Alaska Sea. Lake and Peninsula Borough is so beautiful. Susitna is a southern borough. The North Slope Borough is in Alaska's north. Northwest Arctic touches the Kotzbue Sound's girth. Petersburg Borough is a bunch of islands. The city and borough of Sitka in the southeast it spans. Skagway is a borough where cruise ships stop. Unorganized boroughs all over to visit you'd have to hop. City and borough of Wrangell a wonderful scene. City and borough of Yakutat touches Canada near me. We're Alaska's boroughs and census areas. A northwestern state in the U.S. Come sing along with us. We're Alaska's boroughs and census areas. Our state capital is named Juneau. We have lots to discuss. Aleutians West Census Area is a chain of Alaskan islands. Bethel Census Area, to our east we have Great Mountains. Dillingham Census Area is in the southwest. Una and Goon Census Area is in the south by a test. Kusilbeck Census Area touches the Bering Sea. I'm Gnome Census Area, that's enough about me. Prince of Wales Hyder Census Area is what I am. Southeast Fairbanks Census Area in the east I span. Valdez Cordova Census Area is in the south. Yukon Kai Cook Census Area, you heard this from my mouth. My name is Alaska, a U.S. state. Juneau is my capital, the wilderness here is so great. We're Alaska's boroughs and census areas A northwestern state in the U.S. Come sing along with us We're Alaska's boroughs and census areas Our state capital is named Juneau We have lots to discuss Flower.
sharp toed grouse that can fly. I'm British Columbia, Victoria's my capital, Canada's westmost province, touching the Pacific coast. I have lots of mountain ranges, Whistler Mountain is my most famous. If you're looking to ski or snowboard, I have lots of these places. Hey, I'm Manitoba, my capital's Winnipeg. I'm a province of Canada, I'm not pulling your leg. House flowers, my provincial flower, great gray owls, my bird. I have Arctic tundra in the north and southern farmland to herd. Hey, I'm Ontario, my capital is Toronto. The Hudson Bay's to my north and the U.S. to the south, you know. Half of Lake Ontario sits in my province, you see. It's one of the five great lakes, four of them to border me. We are Canada, made up of ten provinces and three territories.
Yeah, that's where it stands. Southern Ostrobothonia, that is my name. St. Ioki is my capital, we have dance contest fame. Central Ostrobothonia is a region in Finland. My capital, Coca-Cola, it is really grand. We are the country of Finland, made up of 19 regions. We're here to show you we are the country of Finland, located on the continent of Europe, it's true. I'm Ostrobothonia. On Finland's western coast, my capital Vasa, I love the most. I'm Pirkama, that is my name, you can plainly see. Tampere is my capital, this lesson was free. I'm Central Finland, that is my name in English. This is Unaskela, it is quite a dish. Santa Kunta is my name, the southwest is where I am. Body is my capital, this song has no exam. Southwest Finland, that's my name, you understand. My capital Turku, it is my biggest fan. We are the country of Finland, made up of 19 regions. We're here to show you we are the country of Finland, located on the continent of Europe, it's true. I'm Sokaria, a southern region. Labradanda is my capital, it's lots of fun. Pichinde Dabastia is my really cool name. My capital's name is Lati, can you say it the same? Tabastia proper, that is my name, now you know. Hamelina is my capital, now I should go. Ausama is my name, a region in the south. Helsinki is my capital, you heard this from my mouth. I'm Kaiman Lock, so a southern region now you know. Tavolo is my capital, guess I told you so. I am the Island Islands in the mouth of the Baltic Sea. Mary Hom is my capital, where you can be. My name is Finland, a northern European nation. My capital is Helsinki in this location. We are the country of Finland, made up of 19. We're here to show you we are the country of Finland Located on the continent of Europe, it's true My name is Greenland, I am the world's largest island Located between the Arctic and Atlantic Ocean Some people think I'm a country or a sovereign state But I belong to Denmark, an autonomous territory, it's so great We are Greenland's five municipalities Within Greenland, Denmark's autonomous territory We have the largest national park located in Northeast Greenland Greenland has a capital, it's called Nuuk, you'll understand I'm Avanada, a municipality Located in the west, touching the Baffin Bay, you see My municipal seat is called Ilulusa and me It's where the star is spinning at 300 60 degrees. Kujulek is the name I was given. A municipality of Greenland in the south is where I'm living. Kok Kok Tok is this municipality center. The most populous town in the south that you could enter. My name is Kakartalek, as shown here in the west. I was created in 2018. I am new at best. AC it is the name. I'm Greenland's fifth largest town and the municipal center of this municipality you found. Kekata is a municipality in the west. On the island of Greenland, we all think this place is the best. The town of Sisimuit is located right here. It's my municipal center in one that I hold so near. Sarmersuk is a large municipality. I am diagonally shaped in the southeast you can see. Nuke is my municipal center where the star is shown. It's also the capital of Greenland that you now know. I am Greenland, the largest island in the world I am located between the Arctic and Atlantic Ocean. I'm an autonomous territory in the country of Denmark. I'm a stone throw from Canada if you'd like to embark. I have the largest national park in the world you should 
know It's called the Northeast Greenland National Park You know you can go I do have a capital Its name is Nuke It's located in the southwest of my island Please don't rebuke My name is Greenland I am the world's largest island Located between the Arctic and Atlantic Ocean Some people think I'm a country or a sovereign state But I belong to Denmark and autonomous territory It's so great we are Greenland's five municipalities Within Greenland, Denmark's autonomous territory We have the largest national park located in Northeast Greenland Greenland has a capital, it's called Nuke, you'll understand On the southernmost continent, Antarctica is my name I'm a nice covered land mass, the geographic so cool I do claim My name is Antarctica the southern ocean surrounds me I have emperor penguins and I'm uninhabited virtually I am Antarctica, I'm classified as a desert Because so little moisture falls from the sky, I assert Typically I receive two inches of precipitation each year Primarily in the form of snow, Sahara Desert gets more than here The Antarctic ice sheet covers more than 98% of me Over 70% of Earth's fresh water is frozen in this ice sheet Antarctica is the highest continent on our Earth The average elevation is 8200 feet for what it's worth The lowest temperature on Earth was recorded on me Negative 128.6 Fahrenheit in 1983 The geographic south pole is one of the two points Where the Earth's axis of rotation intersects its surface Around 30 countries maintain about 70 research stations About 4,000 people live on me in population On the southernmost continent, Antarctica is my name covered land mass the geographic so pole i do claim my name is antarctica the southern ocean surrounds me i have emperor penguins and i'm uninhabited virtually there are certain animals that can survive my cold they've adapted over time to exist on me isn't that bold there are six different species of penguins found on me the emperor is a deli chin strap king gentoo and macaroni only six of the 35 species of seals are found here Ross, Waddell, Crab Eater, Leopard, Fur, and Southern Elephant appear I also have an abundance of whales that visit me Here's a list of the names of whales that I most commonly see There's the right whale, the blue whale, say whale, and the humpback whale The manky whale, the fin whale, the sperm whale, and killer whale do hail I provide a lot of marine food to fill a whale's belly Most whales visit to eat the krill that's in a Abundance around me. I'm the only continent in the entire world that isn't owned by any country officially. I'm a scientific preserve, though. The world's largest recorded iceberg broke off my Ross Ice shelf. The iceberg B 15 broke off in 2000, it wasn't stealth. On the southernmost continent, Antarctica is my name. I'm a nice covered land mass, the geographic so pole I do claim. My name is Antarctica, the southern ocean surrounds me. I have emperor penguins and I'm uninhabited virtually. We are the five Norwegian regions with a capital name Oslo. Visit any season, we're the five Norwegian regions. We're in Northern Europe, so let the learning begin. I'm Nor Norge, or Northern Norway, the Barents and Norway. of the Norwegian mainland and I'm located in the north of Norway so you understand I'm in Norge, also called Trendelag I'm in the middle of Norway, put that in your geography log The Trondheim feud is an inlet of the Norwegian sea People have lived here for thousands of years in my history We are the five Norwegian regions with a capital name Oslo Visit any season We're the five Norwegian regions We're in Northern Europe So let the learning begin My name is Veslana Or Western Norway Located on the west coast of Norway Yeah, that's where I stay My coastline touches the Norwegian 
region and the North Sea. Now on to the next region. That's enough about me. I am Surana or Southern Norway. I'm the most southern part of the Norwegian coastline, I'd say. My coastline touches the North Sea and the Skagi to the Strait. My region's beautiful. Come see it. Don't you wait. We are the five Norwegian regions with a capital name Oslo. Visit any season. We're the five Norwegian regions. We're in Northern Europe, so let the learning begin. I'm Oslana, or Eastern Norway, you see. On the east side of Norway, touching Sweden, the country. I am home to the capital of the country of Norway. Its name is Oslo, and the star is where it lays. My name is Norway, a Northern European country. I am Scandinavia's western part in Europe, you see. I have a capital name, Oslo, as the star will show you. Please join me to sing the chorus before this song is through. We are the five Norwegian regions. With a capital name Oslo, visit any season. We're the five Norwegian regions. We're in Northern Europe, so let the learning begin. We are the five Norwegian regions. With a capital name Oslo, visit any season. We're the five Norwegian regions. We're in Northern Europe, so let the learning begin. We are the 85 special subjects of the Russian Federation Broken up into five times you'll learn in our explanation We're the first 46 subjects and we're called Oblast We're provinces of Russia so let's learn our names at last I am Amor, Arhangisk is my name I am Askarhan, I'm Milgorod, glad you came I am Bryansk, Chilabinsk is my name Subjects of the Russian Federation Broken up into 
five types you'll learn in our explanation we're the nine craze which are the territories of russia join us to learn our names we promise that we won't rush ya my name is alki kray tantra does my name habaros kizai i'm cross not a Stavropol is my name, I'm Zabaykowski. We are the 85 federal subjects of the Russian Federation. Broken up into five types, you'll learn in our explanation. There are four autonomous subgroups in the Russian Federation. And three federal cities that we will name in our locations. I am Chukotka, I'm Conti Munsi. Minyets is my name. It's nice to meet ya. 
I'm Blunt County. I am big in the Midwest. Ostershund is my capital. It's really the best. I'm the country of Sweden, the northern European country. My capital is Stockholm. Peace is what we'd like to see. This is the kingdom of Sweden. We're the 21 counties in our geographical Earth has four major geological subsystems I will teach you in this song I hope you learn and listen Geosphere, atmosphere, hydrosphere and biosphere Are four major systems on Earth that balance Why we survive here These systems are all separate but interact with one another In so many different ways in each system you will discover Let's start with geosphere, all Earth's material The solid iron in our core is a bit smaller than the moon. The nickel iron alloy on our core is liquid, it is true. The metal is a layer between the crust and on our core, mostly made of minerals and silicate rock. Let's learn some more. Which brings us to the crust in which we all play and live on, made up of rock and lots of elements that keep it real strong. Earth has four major geological subsystems. I will teach you in this song. I hope you learn and listen. The atmosphere's the next sphere that we will look at. It contains our air and protects all of us. Now how about that? The atmosphere's made up of five layers. Now you know one layer blocks radiation from the sun. It's called the ozone. Let's move on to the hydrosphere. It's a major Lakes and rivers and our water vapor too Are what make up the hydrosphere You learn something new The biosphere's the final of the four major groups Including anything that's living That also includes you Microbes, animals, plants, birds, and insects alike Are all part of the biosphere That's true and it is alright Earth has four major geological subsystems I will teach you in this song I hope you learn and listen Here's one of many examples of how these spheres interact There are so many different ways they help us live and that's a fact When volcanoes erupt from the geosphere It releases particles and ash into the atmosphere These particles act Let's talk about the lithosphere and the seven major tectonic plates. It's what shapes the face of the earth with volcanoes and earthquakes. The lithosphere consists of the upper mantle and the crust. They're part of the geosphere on earth which makes these plates adjust. Tectonic plates are irregularly shaped slabs of solid rock composed of oceanic and continental lithosphere bedrock. There are three tectonic boundaries running between tectonic plates. Divergent, conversion, and transform. Now aren't those names just great? Divergent boundaries move away from each other and produce rift valleys. Most active between oceanic plates. Yes, the plates out in the sea. Convergent boundaries move toward one another and destructively collide. That's where you find those earthquakes and volcanoes do reside. 
Transform boundaries are two plates that slide past one another. The San Andreas fault line's the best example of this to discover. Let's talk about the lithosphere and the seven major tectonic plates. It's what shapes the face of the Earth with volcanoes and earthquakes. Let's look at this topological map of the Earth that we live on. And the seven major tectonic plates we're learning in this song. The biggest is the Pacific Plate. It lies beneath the Pacific Ocean. Nicknamed the Ring of Fire due to all the volcanic emotion. The North American Plate is the next on the list of major plates. It includes both continental and oceanic crust I indicate. Next we have the Eurasian Plate, also a major tectonic grate. Two large continents it includes are Europe and Asia today. Let's talk about the and the seven major tectonic plates It's what shapes the face of the earth With volcanoes and earthquakes Then the African plate is next It does straddle the vast equator Most of Africa's continents in it That's an easy way to locate her The Antarctic plate is a medium size Of the seven plates that are major It houses the continent of Antarctica You'll hear as I banter The Indo-Australian smaller side of the majors it's hard to consider two plates but as one it's definitely much greater the south american plate is the smallest of the major plates you know that includes south america and atlantic ocean seabed below talk about the lithosphere and the seven major tectonic plates it's what shapes the face of the earth